G'day guys, Lemon Eating Cow here, and today I am back with another Final Fantasy XV Comrades Guide. And this time I'm going to be showing you how to get a katana that goes all the way up to level 99, has 260 attack, and you can pump this thing up to have around about two to 300 strength on it. So an incredibly good weapon. And the best thing about this is that you can actually make multiple copies of it and equip them all at the same time and benefit from all that strength at once. So yeah, this definitely makes you a powerhouse. So the weapon we're going to be looking at today is the Yoshimitsu and then its evolved form, which is the Honibami. So in order to purchase the Yoshimitsu, you're going to have to be at least at the Maldacio headquarters or the outpost. Once you unlock this, then you're going to have to also unlock some refugees. The refugees can be found in nodes and various quests around the, uh, the Maldicio point. So just unlock all the nodes around here and you'll notice that some of them have like an icon that looks like three people. And that will represent the fact they have refugees in that spot. So just unlock those nodes and you'll get a message saying that the refugees have banded together. At that point you can go back to the town and like elect a uh, representative or a mayor I guess of the town. What you're going to want to do is elect Devon Elkton as the, as the leader of the town. He's kind of got like an apron on, he looks like a bit of a cook. I don't know why he's opening the training post but anyway. Um, he's the guy that's going to open the trading post and give you the uh, Yoshimitsu. So once you've elected him, you can go over to your left a little bit and there he will be standing there with his trading post. And you'll see you can actually buy the Yoshimitsu. You have to trade items to get it. You can trade a Reaper's Funny Bone and a Platinum Ingot for the actual uh, sword. The great thing about this is that you can actually buy multiple copies of this too. So in order to get the Reaper's Funny Bone, you have to do a quest called Urgent Havoc Befalls the Hut. Now in this quest you come up against a few different enemies, but one of them is the Reapers. And the Reapers do drop on average about two to four of these Funny Bones per quest. So it's uh, really quite easy to get these. Most of the time you'll get them all on the first run, so not a very big deal. So the second item you need is the Platinum Ingot. Now you can get this from the mining minigame in the same town. There should be a little pickaxe on the map. Once you go to that, you pay the guy 3,000 gil and you're able to go into a, a little minigame area where you can mine nodes for uh, kilowatts and other things. So in this, it's pretty much random chance, I think, to get the ingot. Just keep on trying the minigame and mine the various nodes. I actually found three of my platinum ingots way up the back on this node. So uh, I maybe there's something to it, but again, it could be completely random. But all you need is one of these, unless you're going to make multiple copies. Once you've grabbed your two items, go back to the trading post there and pick up the Yoshimitsu. With the Yoshimitsu in your hand, head back to Lestalem and we'll have a little bit of a look at how to upgrade this item. So putting the Yoshimitsu on the weapon bench, you can see that there's two bars under the strength and the magic. So that means you have to get both of these stats up in order to remodel the weapon. So each of these have to reach 30 and you can do this with a various combination of materials but by far the easiest way to do it is by using two dragon horns. Now the dragon horns come from a monster called a Jabberwock and the Jabberwocks can be found in a mission called the Injurious Jabberwocks. It comes from breaking their horn or breaking their face area. There's a chance that you will get a dragon horn. It's a pretty slim chance but you've got two Jabberwocks per mission to do this on so uh, it shouldn't take all that long but it, it can be a rare one. So for me, there is a bit of a trick for it. I went into this mission with AI only, and what I did was use either a spear or the rogue sigil for the air step move, or something that lets you kind of uh, hit ranged enemies, because these, these guys, their head is a fair way off the ground, so it can be hard to hit it if you're just using a katana or a, a mace or one of those type of weapons. So again, back at the weapons bench, if we put those two dragon horns into the Yoshimitsu, we can see we've satisfied those two bars down the bottom, which is we need 30 in strength and then 30 in magic. As long as you reach those two requirements before you get the blade to level 50, then it will remodel into the Honibami. So at this point, once you put in those two dragon horns, you can pretty much put any material you want in it. There's going to be no other requirements to level this weapon. And once it goes to the Honibami, the level is actually going to go to 99. So you're going to have a lot of freedom here with what you want to do in regards to the stats. 
Personally, I just pump this thing filled with uh, as much strength as I could. Uh, there's a few different options here. There's some budget options and there's a definite hard long grind to get the uh, the real min max out of it. But even just using the cheapest option, this is still going to be a pretty kick-ass blade. So a good option here is to use chrome bits to level up your strength. Chrome bits are great because you can buy them in an unlimited amount and you don't have to farm for them. There is actually a vendor in the Mount ACO outpost. It's an Imperial. He usually unlocks, I think, after you rescue Biggs and Wedge, the refugees. There'll be an Imperial shop here to the left of the entrance and you can buy an unlimited amount of uh, chrome bits. So that's a good option. It def definitely doesn't give you the best stats, but it does give you a pretty decent weapon at the end of it. Another option is by farming the monster jaws from the Baleful Bandersnatch quest. To get these, you have to break the face or the horns of the Bandersnatch towards the end of the mission, and you will get a monster jaw every time. Another fantastic option is by using those dragon horns that we used before, but this one is going to be a pretty huge time sink, as you're going to need a lot of these to really maximize your weapon. By far the best strength gain, I would say, would be by getting the Behemoth Incisors. The Behemoth Incisors actually come from a quest called Double Deadeye, and by breaking the horns of the Behemoth, you're either going to get the Behemoth Tier, or the Behemoth Incisor. The Behemoth Incisor actually gives 20 strength, so it is massive. But again, this is gonna be one of those ones that it's gonna take you a long time to farm up all of the incisors that you need, but definitely you're gonna get about 300 or so strength out of doing this method. But whether or not that extra 50 or 70 strength is worth it is uh, completely up to you. Anyway guys, I hope that is enough information for you to start making your badass katanas. If you did like this video and it helped you out, then please leave a thumbs up. If you got any comments or suggestions or more efficient ways to level up this weapon, then let me know in the comment section below. And if you haven't subscribed already, then please do so. This has been Lemon Eating Cow. Moo!